for today. Uh, we will go with Ms. Lansman. Ms. Lansman, the floor is yours. You have six minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and, and um, thank you to the minister uh, and his officials for, for being here. I'll jump right into uh, to my questions. Industry experts and uh, media organizations were saying for months, uh, and you alluded to this in your remarks, that there would be a surge in air travel uh, post-COVID. Uh, did the government have a plan to ensure uh, that a transition back to post-COVID travel uh, was, or, or did you have a plan at all? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, to Ms. Lansman for that question. Uh, as I alluded in my remarks, there are significant dollars being asked through the main estimates to help CATSA and airports. Uh, these estimates were not written yesterday or last week or, or even a month ago. They were written months ago, obviously, to illustrate that we have been preparing and planning for, uh, for the increased travel volume as we expected them as the pandemic is turning a corner. Thanks, Mr. Chair, is the minister waiting for an okay on the estimates to implement any plan on uh, post-COVID travel in airports? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, not at all. Uh, we have, uh, uh, our work has been ongoing for weeks, in fact months, uh, and certainly the last few weeks there is a heightened sense of urgency given the surge that we're witnessing not only at Canadian airports, we're witnessing those surges happen around the world, uh, but it does not mean that we shouldn't uh, increase our activities uh, in responding to those surges. So we are, and we have been um, uh, supporting CATSA, supporting airports, supporting CBSA uh, to respond to, to this new volume level, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I'll, I'll go back to CATSA and, uh, in some cases, CBSA, but is the minister aware of any other jurisdiction uh, in, the, in the world that doesn't allow unvaccinated domestic travel? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, countries around the world today still have vaccine mandates. Uh, I just traveled to Germany and the U.S. Both Germany and the U.S. require uh, travelers to be vaccinated prior to entering their country. In fact, is the U.S. requires a pre-departure test, even if you are vaccinated. Is the minister uh, aware, though, of, of any, any country that restricts domestic travel of their own citizens on airplanes or trains with a travel mandate? Mr. Chair, countries, uh, different countries make different decisions on, uh, on the policies uh, to protect their citizens. Um, we have... All along, our government has committed to Canadians to do our best to protect the health and safety of travelers, of those who work in the industry. We consult our experts, and we consult scientists, and make decisions based on what we think is the best for Canadians and Canadian economy. Um, and we are always assessing our measures, and we have lifted many of those measures as we have felt confident that it's safe to do so, and we are constantly assessing and reassessing. Mr. Thank Chair, you. I'll ask, I think the answer is no. Uh, I will ask, uh, is there any specific health advice that the minister has seen to continue 4,000 tests a day in airports, uh, as well as stopping uh, almost 5 million Canadians from domestic air travel because of mandates? Just any specific piece of public health advice, because we asked uh, other members in the House and, and nobody can point to any specific advice that, allow, that, uh, that has led the government to this decision. Mr. Chair, um, over the last two years, we've had to implement a range of measures. Those measures have helped save lives. Canada has one of the lowest death rate in the world because, that, because the fact that Canadians continue to follow public health advice to get vaccinated. Um, and, you know, I understand that there are always questions about the right type of measures, the right type of... Uh, uh, range of, of protections. We are being thoughtful and careful and we are erring on the side of safety because we want to make sure that we are protecting lives, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, while I appreciate what Canadians have done uh, and, and have done during this pandemic, my question was, has the minister seen any specific public health advice to lead him to continue uh, to, uh, to have in place mandates for domestic travel in this country? Just a yes or no? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. We have all the uh, science and advice that we get that guides our decisions. And whether it's testing at airports, random testing at airports, whether it is vaccine mandates, those are all guided by 
data. And as I said, it's, the data proves that Canada has one of the lowest death rates in the world. That is something that we need to acknowledge and, and that we need to remain vigilant as the virus remains with us, as the pandemic is not over. We have lifted many of our public health measures and we are constantly assessing those measures to do the right thing, to protect the health and safety of Canadians. But of course, Mr. Chair, we are guided by data, we are guided by experts, and we are guided by scientists. Mr. Chair, the, the minister just said that he has seen specific health advice to keep the mandates in, the, uh, in place in Canada. I'd like to know if he will table that specific health advice in this committee? Um, Mr. Chair, I am happy to table any advice, any uh, data that uh, the member is not aware of that proves that vaccines save lives, that prove that uh, Canada has one of the lowest death rates in the world, that uh, proves that vaccines have a, a have provided a great service that, to, that wasn't the to humanity. Uh, this is why we are continuously guided by, uh, by vaccines advice and requirement, because we want to protect the health and safety of Canadians, Mr.